As a human being, my psyche is full of incongruous and inconsistent feelings, thoughts, ideas, and urges. Many of these inconsistencies and incongruities exist in close relationship to each other and include shades from the most simple and subtle to the most complex and blatant. To expect otherwise would be to expect the inhuman of myself. In fact, these very incongruities and inconsistencies identify me as human. I contain hateful and loving feelings, possessive, generous, acrimonious, paranoid, open and altruistic feelings, jealous, envious, and self-assured feelings, and many others. I contain them all at the same time. They exist side by side, and they never exist in pure form. They are always there in combinations and patterns, at least as complicated as the biochemical makeup of a molecule of life. The complexity of my feelings is further enhanced by the myriad shades and nuances each represents. I can feel anywhere from imperceptible imitation to raw, raging hate. I can feel anywhere from a slight sense of ownership to utter possessiveness and bitter chauvinism. The complexity of my inner psychic life and my life as a relating human being is further complicated by the fact that the people to whom I relate are as complex as I am. We do perceive each other. We do live within the matrix of the culture into which we were born and which constantly affects us as we in turn contribute to it. And none of what goes on in us remains static. Like the biological living cell, like the molecule of life, like the universe we live in, all is in a constant state of flux. To demand congruity, consistency, fixed contracts, irrevocable decisions, clear-cut choices and ideas, predictable fixed behavioral patterns, purity of purpose and simple, well-delineated feelings, free of ambivalence and ambiguity, in a world that becomes increasingly more complex every second, is demanding a condition that is antithetical and foreign to the state of being a person. It is also asking for a death warrant. Ultimate smoothness and lack of inner incongruity, total lack of inner conflict and lack of struggle, and constant adaptation only take place in death itself. This is not to say that inner conflict and turmoil cannot be reduced to relatively comfortable proportions. As the quest for utter inner peace and perfection and the attempt to have it all is reduced, relative comfort ensues. But comfort can only be relative. Knowing this is of immediate value in reducing self-hate born of impossible expectations. I must insist on the right to changes of feelings and even complete turnabouts in how I feel. I must insist on the human right to change my mind. This is not schizophrenic evidence of weakness or lack of commitment. It is evidence of being an alive, flexible, adaptable human being who constantly receives information, assembles and reassembles it, and feels many, many ways. I insist on the right to harbor all kinds of nuances and mixtures of feelings, moods, certainties, uncertainties, and confusions. I know that clinging to the stance of being immediately clear about things masks chronic confusion that is never clarified at all. I know that permitting myself and even encouraging confusion is the only route to real reevaluation and real clarification. The former is an attempt to muddle through and to delude myself. The latter is allowing dissolution to take place and that real reassemblage and reintegration can follow. It is frightening to let go, to feel it, and to feel confused, but this very process permits the kind of clarity that leads to real inner strength. Our human demand for congruity creates unnecessary confusion and even terror. We become confused when we encounter the unexpected. Sometimes we become terrified because we encounter that which we have convinced ourselves is not supposed to be there. If we attempt to hold down and out of the way any feelings or ideas that are incompatible with our contrived notions of ourselves in the world, surely revulsion, horror, terror, and even panic will ensue whenever these incongruities threaten to emerge. Repressed feelings are the ones that burst forth to produce unwanted and incomprehensible acts. To the extent that we honor all aspects of ourselves, 
we remove revulsion, self-hate, horror, and terror from our lives. As whole human beings, we are the creatures of the greatest complexity on this planet. Respect for this complexity includes our insisting on acceptance of the inconsistent and incongruous.